Does anybody remember the Radiohead album OK Computer from 1997? It has gained worldwide success since its release and has become known as one of the best albums of all history, along with Coldplay's Parachutes from 2000. Speaking of Coldplay, did you know that their lead singer Chris Martin has assisted Radiohead in writing songs for OK Computer? Now you may be thinking that's bullshit. Because Chris is not credited in the album booklet. The reason for this, however, is because the song he wrote, songs he wrote, never made it onto the album. And here's why. Chris Martin was well into college in the 90s, along with his friend Johnny Buckland. At the time, he was a fan of Radiohead and wanted to meet the band in person. When he did, he and Johnny wanted to show off their musical talents to Thorn Yoke, who is Radiohead's lead singer. Thorn was impressed. <clears throat> Thorn was impressed and asked Chris and Johnny to assist him in writing songs for a future album. They both agreed. In 1996, Chris Martin and Johnny Bucklin wrote sev several songs for the album. These songs were, if all else, So Sad, Panic, and Vic Vatums. They both demand them for the band members of Radiohead, who were heavily impressed with the results. Well, most of them were. Thom, on the other hand, was set off by the moody panic. He had all he had a sort of well look on his face when the song finished. What's wrong? asked Chris. Johnny and the other band members turned to Thom. Oh nothing, he said. In late nineteen ninety six, Thom Yoke suffered a mental breakdown. That song he would he would keep saying to himself before cringing as if he was starved. It was that one lyric that would repeat in his head and drive him into sanity. We live in a beautiful world. He would try anything to make it stop. Even listen to music of his own. Nothing worked. Johnny Greenwood, a member of Radiohead, eventually took him to a therapist. That would only make things work. Thom tried to finish answering a question, but instead he started screaming and crying. He then attacked the therapist, thinking he was Chris Martin. Make it stop, he shouted. Johnny could hear him from across the hallway. He came into the room and tried to stop Thom. What the hell are you doing, said Johnny angrily. That song, he replied. In early 1997, Chris Martin was beginning to form his own band, known as the Pet Petticrolls at, this, at the time. Consisting of himself as the lead singer, Johnny Buckland as the guitarist, and Guy Berman as the bassist. Chris originally didn't like Guy, but they eventually became friends. Chris still contributes to write, writing songs for Radiohead. Thor Yoke arrived at the studio late, which was unusual because he was always on time beforehand. He was a nervous wreck. Both hands were shocked at his appearance and no, not at all compatible to when Sid Burrett, Pink, Pink, Pink Floyd's former lead singer, entered Abbey Road studio while Pink Floyd was, were recording songs for Wish You Were Here. In fact, it was much worse than that. Thor was still recognizable, but he was sweating so much the red on his forehead made it look like he was bleeding. He slightly whimpered as well. He looked like he didn't sleep in days. Chris Martin was so shocked he was scared. What the fuck happened to you? He asked. Thumb then tried to attack him. At the moment, it was a riot. The members of Radiohead were trying to get Thorm York away. Johnny Buckland tried to help the poor, defenseless Chris Martin. 
Guy Berman reached for the phone and called 911. Staff members noticed that what was happening and tried to help. The police arrived and broke up the fight. Thorne was handcuffed. An ambulance arrived and took him away. And took a an ambulance arrived and took away Chris. Nobody could believe what just happened that hour. Chris Martin had to spend more than a month in the hospital. He had a broken leg, bite marks and scratches all over, and a slightly damaged rib cage. When people asked how he felt, he humorously said that he felt like he had just performed a Jackie Chan stunt. Meanwhile, Thorm York was in court. Thorm York has been reportedly guilty for attacking an individual, an individual known as Chris Martin, said the jury. Thorm's attacks has, report, has been reported all over the news and on the newspapers. Fans and such across the world then labeled him as a threat. Chris Martin recovered from his severe injuries, as did Tom York from his mental breakdown. Despite what happened, Chris still had some respect for left for Thorm, and wanted to continue writing songs for Radiohead. Thorm, however, dis now disliked Chris, consistently insulting him f and blaming him for what happened. Then be that way, said Chris as he angrily left the studio. The other band members felt saddened for Chris leaving. No, don't leave, they shouted. Chris ignored them. I was out without a goodbye. In mid-1997, OK Computer was released and gained worldwide success and reached the top of the charts within days. Chris Martin also liked it, but he could, but he knew he could do better. In 1998, Chris Martin's band, now known as Starfish and eventually Coldplay, was complete was competing with when Will. Campon joined as the drummer for the band. Tim Rice Oxlin was extended to be the pianist for the band, but joined Kane Carney instead. Chris eventually reached the bachelor's degree and graduated. Chris eventually received his bachelor's degree and graduated from college. Many of the songs he wrote for Radiohead were included on the 1998 Alv 1999 release. The Blue Room EP, such as Panic, which was now, now known as Don't Panic. The release of Coldplay's debut album, Parachutes, they managed to gain more success than Radiohead ever did due to its brilliantly written songs. Yellow, the second single f from the album, has rocketed on the charts within days, then thus outselling Radiohead's Karma Police. But the real question is, what is the story behind OK Computer? That's probably what you're thinking as you read this story. Well, here's the answer. It was a disaster. The original recordings for the album were ab abysmal and even hauntening. Some beta, beta listeners experienced seizures and near-death experiences. Railhead only just managed to shape up the songs so they didn't sound haunting. Had they not, only God knows what would happen to them. Luckily, a friend of mine, who is also into Radiohead, had given me a bootleg of the original recording for OK Computer. Since I don't have epilepsy, I was able to sit through the whole album whole album without any seizures and since I'm still alive I will tell you the contents of the original album track one was airbag which was the first track on the finished album it only sounded slightly different otherwise it's exactly the same track two was vitamins the first song that Chris Martin the lead singer of Coldplay wrote for the album. It started out with some weird noises and then began a processed guitar sound. This is obviously something Chris would never write. 
must have been tampered with by the producers. Anyway, it cuts off as soon as the f first word began, which was it. Now, what could it be? Well, further research shows that it was a long drive home. But from what? Track 3 was karma, pol was karma police. Same old, same old. Until a strange buzzing noise sounded at the end. Track 4 transitionized from Karma Police and into So Sad, another song written by Chris Martin. It sounded like a reverse piano chord. I knew it was from another song, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Moaning could be heard in the background. I was getting scared. Thankfully it erupted, erupted,ly cut off like vitamins did. Track 5 was If All Else, once again written by Chris Martin. The loud buzzing noise from the King of Leon's song Crawl is Audible and is extended by 10 seconds. But what was weird is that Crawl didn't exist until at least 2008. How is this possible? But anyway, it's once again another song and this time I, would, I recognized it. Yellow, a Coldplay song from 2000, but with darker, but with different lyrics and more dark sounding instrumentals. But only in the ch chorus though. Track 6 was Nude. A song written for OK Computer, but was scrapped and discarded until 2007 when it appeared on In Rainbows. The song began with the sound of ripping clothes. I instantly knew what it meant by nude. It was a woman stripping. I thought I was going to be listening to a song about a strip club, but what happened next? I will never listen to Radiohead the same way again. When the song began, it was disordered and very disturbing. Constant reverses and pitch changes made me think I was listening to the Beatles song, Tomorrow Never Knows. 30 seconds in, there was a blood-curdling scream, loud enough to break my fucking window and send me to, the, to a hospital. I turned the volume down immediately. Sounds of wood falling apart and broken glass scattered made it worse. Eventually it stopped, and that was left, and all that was left was a small demonic rumble. It sounded like Have a Cigar ending guitar solo being played in slow-mo and in reverse. I felt like crying. Track 7 abruptly started with 10 seconds of static before showing bleeding, before slowly bleeding into panic. Again, written by Chris Martin. The song is pretty much Don't Panic, another Coldplay song from 2000 though originally released in 1999. I was completely revealed by the fact that there was no screaming after the previous track, but something felt um, different about this version of Dope Panic. I continued to think about it for a while, until my train of thought was cut off by the sound of static. Unusually sounds, unusual sounds began, and the reverse reading of a Bible verse could be heard. Me being a Christ Christian, I covered my ears in mercy. I started to cry. That reverse piano chord began again. Now I knew what it was. Trouble. Another Coldplay song, again from 2000. Track 8 was no surprise. What sounded like a factory at the beginning was later vitamins again. After that lyrics, it was a long drive home, it abruptly cut off. Then it was the actual no surprise. Same old, same old. Track 9 was Paranoid Android. Same old song, but the end transition into the ending of To Shiver. Another song, another Coldplay song from 2000 and one of the first written by the band. 
This was strange. The se several singles from Coldplay's debut album, Parachutes, in the form of Bez songs for OK Computer, Shiver, Yellow, Trouble, and Dope Panic, scattered in a different order. What did this mean? Track 10, thankfully the last track of the horrid bootleg with exit music for a film. As soon as it began, I started, smell, smell, I started to smell something in the air. Smoke. Holy shit, my CD player caught on fire. I panicked and went to get a bucket of water and put that, that fire out. But as soon as the smoke alarm sounded, the CD player exploded. Oddly, the CD was st still there in perfect condition. I was baffled about this. I went to go ask my friend if he had any similar experience. He said yes and explained what happened. As soon as track 10 started, iTunes started glitching up, he said. My computer burst into flames, but as soon as the smoke detector alarm alarmed, it exploded. The CD was still intact, though. But there were no pieces of my computer. Strangely, it's as if it never existed. I asked him if anything else happened. When I got home from school, my computer was there, he answered. I turned it on and everything was still there. It's as if nothing happened that morning. I went back home, knowing what was going to be there. Lo and behold, my CD player was there. I ignored this and went to my computer to experiment. I turned, it turned out that the object contaminated within exit music for a film's sound channel had triggered this event. I, success, I successfully got rid of this object and proceeded to listen to the song without my CD player spontaneously combusting. Why my CD player? Because I didn't want to take the risk of losing my computer in case something else happened. It was an ex it was an acoustic version of the song with the chords being played in reverse literally playing in the reversal sheet of the song it sounded like a diff like a completely different song when it ended the same thing as before happened calm fire smoke detector exploder etc however the cd was in pieces when i got home from school the pieces disappeared and the CD player didn't come back. In the place of the CD player, there was a sticky note. You should have done that. British Entertainment Network. British Entertainment Network. Ben.